In factoring trinomials part two, we're going to look at trinomials that have numbers greater than one in front of the x squared. As in the case of the simpler ones, we look at the plus sign here first, and that tells us both signs in the brackets will be negative. And we can put those in first, then we don't have to worry about them anymore. Signs are the same. We're looking for a sum of 11 in the middle. So I'm going to write down factors of 6, 1 and 6, 2 and 3, and also factors of 3, 1 and 3, and I'm going to switch around one of these sides and write this as 3 and 1. Because what I want to do here is I want to pick a pair of numbers here, because these will guarantee that I get the 6x squared, and a pair of numbers over here, because these will guarantee that I get the 3. And I have to get a combination through multiplying from here to the second group to get this 11 in the middle. Now the numbers that work this time are the 2 and the 3 and the 3 and the 1. And what I do is this. I multiply 2 times the 1 and 3 times the 3. It's kind of a crisscross. 2 times 1 3 times 3. That gives me 2 and 9, which gives me a sum of 11. And if I put them in in this order, 2x, 3x, that guarantees I get the 6x squared at the beginning, the 3 and then the 1, the 3 here and the 1. If I look at the outer and the inner, I get negative 2x and negative 9x, for a total of negative 11x. Here's another question of the same type. There's a plus at the end that tells me the signs are the same. So I put this sign in both brackets. When the signs are the same, I'm looking for a sum of 22. Factors of 9. 1 and 9. 3 and 3. Factors of 8. 1 and 8, 2 and 4. And to switch around one side, the easiest way to do it is to put a 9 and a 1 on this side. Now the pair that work this time are the 1 and the 9 and the 2 and the 4. Because 1 times 4 is 4, 9 times 2 is 18, 4 and 18 add up to 22. The time-consuming part is checking all the possibilities here in order to get the correct sum in the middle. So the 1 and the 9 gives me 1x and 9x. The 2 and the 4 I put in like this, and then 4. The outer is 4x. The inner is 18x. That gives me the 22 in the middle. Now they're a little bit harder when there's a minus on the end because if there's a minus there, <clears throat> the signs are different. And I'm also looking for a difference of 4. So factors of 12, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Factors of 5, 1 and 5, and uh, we'll switch this side around make it 5 and 1. Now I'm looking for a difference of 4. That difference is right here. 2 times 5 is 10. 6 times 1 is 6. That gives me a difference of 4. Once again, 2 times 5 is 10. 6 times 1 is 6. The difference between 10 and 6 is 4. Put the numbers in. 2x and 6x. 1 and 5, 1 and 5. Now the signs. This is a 6x, this is 10x. I need a plus 4 in the middle, so the 10x way over here, I put the plus sign, that gives me plus 10x minus 6x. That's the, the trickiest part of it, getting the signs in the right spot. Now one more with a minus sign on the end. 
Uh, lots of factors of 24. Uh, we've got 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. And fortunately 3 doesn't have many factors, 1 and 3, and I'll switch around this side. It's a lot easier than switching the other side around. Now, the signs are different, so I'm looking for a difference of, in this case, 1. And the numbers that work here are 3 times 3, 8 times 1. 9 and 8 have a difference of 1. So these are the numbers I'm going to use. 3 and 8 goes in here, 3x times 8x, that gives us the 24x squared. The 1 and the 3, 1 times 3 is 3. And because this is 8x and the outer is 9x and we need more positives, put the plus with the 9 and the minus with the 8. Remember the first thing you should do is look at this sign. This is like the quarterback. It sets up how you're going to do it. If this is a plus sign on the end, signs are the same and you look for a sum for the middle term. If that's a minus, signs are different and you look for a difference.